We're continuing in our study on Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. I'm not going to read the passage again today. Uh, you can pause and read it again if you would like, but we read it in our introductory study uh, in the previous video to this. But we're talking about the birth of Jesus and the Annunciation when Gabriel came to Mary and told us that she was going to have a baby. The things that Gabriel said to her are very revealing about the identity of Jesus. And uh, I reminded you that we're going to talk about who Jesus is because that's what we learn in this passage of Scripture. So let's talk about one of the things that makes Jesus who he is. He is great in his sonship, the fact that he belongs to God as a son. The great fact given by Gabriel to Mary is that this baby you're going to have is going to be the Son of God. The first thing that makes Jesus absolutely unique from every other child that was ever born, that makes him unique from every other individual who ever lived, is Gabriel said he will be called the Son of the Most High. That is a unique statement made about Jesus and made about Jesus alone. Think about the uniqueness of it. You read through the Bible and you'll come across the phrase Son of God several times. You may remember when God created Adam. The Bible said that Adam and Eve were sons of God. If you keep reading through the Old Testament, in the book of Genesis, you'll see a place where the angels were called the sons of God. You and I are, you and I are often called the sons of God and the children of God. And in a sense, yes, we are all children of God, in the sense that God is our creator, and he is the heavenly father of us all. He did create the world, and he created all of us. There's another uniqueness, though, about our sonship, and that is that those of us who have trusted Christ as our personal Savior, by faith and through grace, we've become children of God by being birthed into his family and we become heirs to all the riches of our father but when the Bible says that Jesus will be called the son of the most high that's different than every other time the Bible talks about people being sons of God as a matter of fact there's a little absence of a word here in the text, in the Greek language that makes it unique. There is no article in front of the word son. In other words, it doesn't say Jesus will be a son of God. He is going to be the son of God. John said it this way in John chapter 6, verse 13. He said, he is the only begotten son of God. The angel Gabriel said to Elizabeth in our passage, when she said, how can I have a child? I'm not married. I'm a virgin. I've never had a sexual relationship with a man. The Bible says Gabriel said to her that the Holy Spirit would come upon her and the power of God would overshadow her. You may remember in the Old Testament, that when the children of Israel were in the wilderness, coming out of Egypt to the promised land, a cloud used to guide them. And it would be a shadow or a covering to them. The Bible says somehow in a mysterious way that God came like a cloud and overshadowed her. And in a mystery, this young virgin maiden girl was overshadowed by the presence of God and God would place his very self in the womb of this young girl, Mary. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about the virgin birth because that's here. I believe it is a very important doctrine of the Bible that is absolutely crucial and critical to the message of Christianity. It's not just a side note, but it is a part of the main Christian message that Jesus was born of a virgin. If you take away the virgin birth of Jesus, in essence, you take away the deity of Jesus. You say, what? 
Jesus was born of a woman. That makes him a man. And a man needed to die for us as our substitute. But God implanted himself inside her, and that made Jesus God as well. And we didn't just need a man to die for us. We needed God to die for us. So the Holy Spirit overshadowed her and planted the seed of himself in her. And this gives the birth of Jesus its deity. It was a virgin who was conceived of a child. We didn't just need a man to die for us. We needed God to die for us on the cross. Jesus is unique. He is God. He is man. He's not half God, half man. He's all man and he's all God. Uh, you may have heard this most of your life, but it becomes very and very important when you understand the real teaching of the New Testament. Right now in America, there are all kind of Eastern ideas or Eastern religions that are cropping up. Every cult that you may run into at the airport or that may knock on your door that is not a part of mainline Christianity. I can tell you how to identify whether or not they're a cult or a true Christian group. Here it is. Listen, this is very important. Every cult will take Jesus Christ and make something a little less out of him than the absolute, co-equal, co-eternal Son of God. Every one of them make him something less than that. For example, the Mormon church teaches that Jesus and Lucifer are brothers. And Lucifer was the brother that fell in Jesus. is the one who made it as the Son of God. And they go on to teach the Mormons do that one day we're all going to be sons of God on the same level of Jesus and we'll spend eternity as the sons of God. It's simply not what the New Testament teaches. Again, all cult groups take Jesus and make him a little less than the only begotten Son of God. I like to listen to men on the radio at Christmas and Easter when they try to talk about Jesus secular unbelievers talking about Jesus. They'll say wonderful things about him. He's a great man, a wonderful example, a great teacher. But that's not enough. Jesus was not just a good man. He was God-man. Jesus is, was, and always will be God. He's nothing less than God himself. We're not just merely saying he's a good fellow. He became uh, uh, Mary birthed the Son of God. Okay? So the manner of his birth, the fact that it was a virgin birth, becomes essential to who we believe Jesus is. This Jesus didn't just claim to be a man. He claimed to have the power and the authority to forgive sins. When he healed a man, he didn't just say you're healed. He said your sons are forgiven. Nobody but God can do that. So... Jesus claimed to be God. He said, before Abraham ever was, I was. Okay? You, you can have a good time thinking about this. You can't ever say God was. You can't ever say he will be. All you can say is he is. Because he always is. He's the eternal present tense. You can go home and chew on that for a little while, but I promise you it's true. He is and he always is. Uh, he said, before Abraham was, I is. Okay? He said, I am. That's what he told Moses in front of the burning bush when he said, what's your name? He said, I am. Okay? He was not just giving him a name. He was telling him what he is. I am God. Always will be, always have been, you know. Jesus, somebody said to Jesus, are you claiming to be greater than Abraham? And he said, before Abraham was, there I am. Uh, so if, if Jesus claimed to be God and he wasn't, then he's not a good man and he's not a truth teller. He's either the Lord or he's a liar or he's a lunatic. The Bible says in, in John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, this means Jesus, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's referring to Jesus, okay? Jesus was never created. He was not a created being. 
He has always existed. Jesus says, I am. Uh, now, I know that's a little hard for us to comprehend, but it's truth. Two times in the New Testament, God speaks out of heaven and vo verbally declares that Jesus is the Son of God. You may remember when John saw him walking by the Jordan River, John stopped preaching right in the middle of his sermon and said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And Jesus came to John and said, Baptize me. And Jesus said, No way. I'm not worthy to do that. But Jesus said, Go ahead and do it. And he did. And after Jesus was baptized, the Bible says that the Spirit of God descended from heaven in the form of a dove. You've got the Trinity in one spot, the Spirit coming like a dove, the Son standing in the water as a man, and then the Father, God out of heaven, says, this is my beloved Son. What a great day that would have been. So Jesus is unique. Uh, the Bible says, God said, this is my Son. Hear what he has to say. Romans 1 verse 14 says, when Jesus was resurrected, he was declared to be the Son of God according to the power of his resurrection. Nobody stood in front of the resurrection uh, to, to raise Jesus. He raised himself. Okay, So what we're talking about today is the identity of Jesus. He is the one and only begotten Son of God. That's what makes Christianity unique. We'll finish looking at what the Gabriel said in our next lesson.